Hello everybody. So I'm uh, walking through a little forest right now on my own. As I film this, we are in the pandemic, which means it's very difficult to do much of anything. So I haven't been traveling all that much, but that does not mean I haven't been fruit hunting. I have been fruit hunting within my means. <laughs> I've gotten a little bit of work that was you know, safely done, like socially distanced work, um, outdoor events and what what have you, and um, when I do those, I take a look around, try to find fruit. And there were a few occasions where my girlfriend and I went up into uh, like nature <laughs> to get away from the city. Also, you know, being safe, but uh, we would take those opportunities, kind of like I take. Well, I would take those opportunities to kind of like look around and for and find more uh, more fruit. So a lot of foraging is going on uh, and what I'm gonna do today for this episode is do a little compilation of some of the little foraging adventures that I've had. There's nothing too crazy in this episode. It's not gonna be fruit that you know tastes like pickles and will like eat your face if you don't cook it. Um, but still it is it does show another side of like what makes fruit hunting, like what I'm doing for this channel so much fun, is just, even now, where I can't travel really, uh, going out into nature and just like looking around is such a good time. The biggest thing about like why I do this is, you know, the fruit is great, but mostly it's the journey. And you can still have a pretty good journey even in the current times with uh, the limitations that we have right now. So. Yeah, anyway, I babbled enough. I'm going to show you a few of the things that I found and where I found them in, uh, in this episode. And um, yeah, hope you enjoy. So I am in the Catskills right now. Uh, I came up this way uh, on my own. Had a socially distanced gig up this way. So... I am just walking around in a park, got some time to kill, and as I was walking around, you know, I can't see the world the same way anymore. As I look around, like, anywhere in nature, or anywhere at all, if I see a plant, I gotta, like, look at it and be like, is that a fruit? Can I eat that fruit? That's just, like, the lens that I have now uh, as, I, as I go out into the world. <laughs> and, um, you know, if you look at the world this way, if you just kind of, like, look around, you find fruit, edible fruit, like all over the place. And um, I don't know all that much, you know, believe it or not, this I've had this channel for so long, I am not a plant expert. I have just eaten a lot of fruit. Uh, at the end of the day, like I don't have any background in this stuff or foraging for that, for that matter. So what I found here, I don't know exactly what it is. It's probably just blackberries, probably just your standard blackberries, but I don't think I reviewed your standard blackberry on the, uh, on the channel, so why the hell not? Okay, so first of all, what caught my eye were these little berries right here. Very bright red, so they stood out, and these are not mature. They're way too hard. But if you go over a little bit uh, this way, you can see in there some dark berries and these I believe are a type of blackberry so like they're shiny on one side a little bit lighter and rough on the other side uh, I don't think they are black raspberries I did a little googling and black raspberries they tend to have a lighter bottom to it and they don't usually look like that uh, big the little whatever you want to call it the little berry lobes are uh, tend to be a little bit bigger on uh, blackberries. Hmm. Sour. <laughs> Very sour. Much more sour than a regular blackberry. But not like kill you sour. It's like a 7 out of 10 for sourness. Not very sweet. Like maybe like a 1 or 2 out of 10. Definitely not the best blackberry in the world. Not as good as ones you get from a supermarket. But I think part of that is because these ones are not 100% ripe. They look ripe, but I think they need a, a couple more days. And all throughout here, these are all blackberries. 
So not a bad place to stop. I just like walk through this park uh, to find a place to, to sit down and, and read. I've got my Kindle over there. So I was just going to find a place, and I think I found the place. So I can sit down, I can read, and have a little snack while I'm doing it. I'm out in the Catskill Mountains right now, walking around. I am surrounded by blueberries. There are so many blueberries here. There's one type of blueberry right here. These are, I don't know what kind, but as you can see, they're like dark. They look a little bit like bilberries, but when you uh, break them open, they're white on the inside, not red. So these are just a, some kind of a blueberry. But over here, there's another type of blueberry. Then these ones aren't ready yet. You can see like little teeny green berries on them, but I'm not sure what these are. But I'm pretty sure there is some other kind of blueberry. And then over here, there's another blueberry still. And these ones, I could tell, are a different type because they have like a like a dustiness to them. This. See side by I, I broke one open obviously, but one of them has like this dusty coloring on it, the other one is smooth. So I'm guessing these are all different species of wild North American blueberries. So let me try one of the uh, dusty ones first. Hmm, so good. These ones are a little bit tart. They have like a little touch of like a green apple taste mixed in with, with blueberry. But what's nice about it is they have like a little bit of like a foraged berry kind of taste, like a leafy herbal sort of element to it that is in the, in the best possible way. Mmm. The dark ones are better though. The dark ones taste very similar but a stronger berry taste and they're more sweet like the dark ones have a have a sweetness that i mean they're not as sweet as like a store-bought blueberry maybe like a four out of ten three out of ten and the uh the dusty ones like a three out of ten these are so good so much better than commercial ones and the best thing about it is I picked them myself out in nature and you just can't, you can't beat this. It's such a wonderful experience going around foraging things. So um, that is like the true reward at the end of the day is like sitting down and getting to eat what I picked. You can't beat that feeling. This is so nice. You know, like I am just out here for work. I wasn't intending to do any fruit hunting, but if um, if you just kind of like look around, you find fruit everywhere. Fruit is everywhere, especially if you go into like little parks and arboretums and stuff like that. You'll see fruit like all over the place, and um, you know, it might not be the craziest thing in the world, but still, it's free. It's beautiful. It tastes tastes nice, and it's fun to to do this. So I think uh, yeah, lesson of today keep your eyes open. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. So I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Hey, before you click out, I want to give a very special thank you to AltPod, Smarter Every Day, and the Harbor Leaf Tea Company. They are mega patrons over on patreon.com. Uh, patreon.com, if you haven't heard of it, it is how this channel happens. It's how I get all the funding to go on the trips I go on and how I get all the fruit that I try. So if you're interested in supporting my channel, uh, check out the link in the description below. Uh, another thing is that I have t-shirts for sale. Those are also available in the description below as well. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.